Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here on Ravenport. We are going to carry straight on from where we left off in the last episode, so let's get to it. There's quite a few different ways that we can do it, but they're all fairly slow. That's the one thing now with silage, with, with moving it to sell it, is it's not the fastest way of doing it. However, on the plus side, silage at the biogas plant is almost, I, I think it's permanently set at 500 per thousand. Right, we've now got biogas plant, we can sell right there, we can sell effluent, we can sell manure. Right there, three hundred dollars per thousand liters. Three hundred dollars a ton for effluent, uh, for slurry, and for manure. Right there, which is fantastic. Six hundred dollars a ton for silage. Right there, the barn. The price varies. Biogas plant. It stays at a steady six hundred at all times. And you can't sell. You can so you can sell those three products there. But the fact that it stays at a steady 600 all the time means that you can make a vast sum of money out of it. you just got to move it from the clamp to the sell point, And that's the bit that can be a bit time-consuming, time unless we get a mod of some kind. Because, like, even the, um, the conveyor belts, they're very, very slow with how the game works. With, with like, how the standard game... and. They've even changed it so you can't just leave the conveyor belts running. You've actually got to physically be on the conveyor belt nursing it in order for it to keep running. You can't get off the conveyor belt for it to um, to work. Or at least this is what I've been told. I haven't actually tried them. I've not really used them because I thought, you know, I like the conveyor belts. I, I always thought that they were quite good in FS17. It's just that they are quite slow. So I generally didn't use them all that much just because of how slow they were. We'll bring this one up round here. We get our first 45,000 litres in. This, So this trailer here, obviously, we're going to use it for the outside round and then we will park it up on the side of the road and we won't use it anymore. Just bring it over here. I may even... Whoop, steady. Steady. We may even just use this to do one run up along the side. Like, if I get one more trailer load, and then I could run... No, I can't. I was just thinking I could run alongside the forager, but uh, I really... I want to empty out the... I, I want to do a full run around the outside of the field so I've got room for the forager to turn around properly. So, no, scrap that idea. And start tipping that there. Like that. You can do it in a bit of a line. I do like the way that this one tips up. Right, I noticed that when I was doing the time-lapse recording last week. Right, the way that this one tips and does tip out onto the ground, it is actually very, very good. The only issue we're going to have with rolling our clamp is I've gone and put that a little bit too far up on one end, I think. We may regret that. Right, we'll bring you up round here. And... Our only issue here is that we've got to go across the railway. So we've either got to go right up the other end and then come back. Or I've got to go across down this way. Like, we don't have a straight line over to the field. And, I mean, it's, it's not a huge thing. And we do ha we are going to have to be careful for the, watching out for the train. Right, if we get, the, if we, if we get halfway across and the, light and the barriers come down and sort of squash our land right over our truck while we've got both trailers all full of chaff and then we get stuck. I don't think it's going to be very pretty. I, honestly, I, I, I don't think that is going to end well for us or an, anyone else involved for that, for that matter. I think that is going to cause some very serious issues. Right. Let's bring you up to there. There we go. We'll go like that, and just going to tuck that one down there a minute. He doesn't need to go anywhere else. He can just stop right there. And, oh. Well, which way is the fast, that there? Right. We'll get to that one. We'll get to that one and get that one loaded up. Back you up there. Right, we've just done that now. See, I put that 625 litres of chaff. So you've no idea how much actually goes into, like, that there is an onboard tank on this forager 
but you don't actually know how much is going into that onboard tank because there's no indication anywhere to say whether it's full or not. And I don't like that bit. That's that's one little bit that I'm not too keen on. Overall, though, it, it is pretty good. I got, I got no real complaints about this Forager. I like it. it does an excellent, fan schmabulous job. It looks very cool. I love the fact that it can extend on the cab and lift right up so that it's up over the top. Let's go and have a look. Right, that that does genuinely make a difference when when you're in cab. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't like the in-cab driving particularly anyway. Uh, but when you're in cab, it does certainly make it a lot easier to see what you're doing. You know, we, we know that when you're harvesting maize like this, it's... It's not very easy to see what you're doing at the best of times. And the fact that... So being able to lift it right up like that and see actually above the crop, I think that's a really, really good idea. And I'm surprised that more foragers don't have such a feature. I'm going to bring this one on up through here. Yeah, we. I think we will go right the way round because, you know, thinking about it, we're going to want the forager to be able to turn around without having to go right out onto the road. I mean, I suppose really, well, turning on the road shouldn't be an issue for it. There's no traffic going. We know there's no traffic going along there, so that shouldn't be a problem. It's just that it's time consuming to go and empty out the... Um, the trailer, that's all. That's, that's the, literally the only thing that is against the idea of going all the way round is that it's time consuming to go and empty this trailer continuously. Once we get the other two trailers on, we'll be able to just follow this one along. I suppose I could have tried using course play. I've decided not to put course play onto this map. And I, I, all of these, like the, the big mods, the, the, the real game changers, as well as using the Stevie stuff, um, I'll start looking at those more on future maps, on the next ones. Uh, but right now, I'm just thinking I'll go with what we've got right here. Now, we had 625 litres, didn't we? So we've now finished. I'm going to go on round a little bit more because I'm curious just how much this one will take with an onboard tank and how much it will end up just not taking at all. Right? We've... I know that technically the onboard tank shouldn't really exist, but we, we've gone there a really long way. We should have well over a thousand litres on that. Let's just back that one up like that so that it can easily come off. And then I'll drive you down here a minute. May as well just shut that one off a, minute, a second. There, and we get you. We'll whiz up round and we'll grab that trailer. So we've got another trailer to go and empty. And then we can come back and we can see just how much we've put into that onboard tank. And we've done... We've done a fair bit. Maybe one more trailer load will be all we really need. And then we can move to our big trailers. I really want to get going with the big trailers. Oop, oop. This one really does slide. It's really, really easy to slide this one around. It's kind of... A bit disconcerting, really. It's, it's not meant. I'm sure it's not meant to slide quite that easily. We go this way this time. Run on down here. Whiz across the the crossing, just down the bottom. It's crossing here somewhere. Oh yes, yeah, it's it's. it's um, I, I was thinking it was right here, but it's not. Come down this way a little bit, and there's the crossing just down there. So I want to get past that car, and get across. Oh, right. You know. What? I'm think See how close it gets, right? The, the lights still haven't come down. Now the warning lights come on, and that's... That cuts it pretty fine, so you really, really... It, it is a good idea, especially if you've got a long road train. Just look ahead and see where the train is. Either that will stop the train altogether on the map. When it goes the other way... It seems to last longer before it actually lets you... You do see why I'm stopped, Yeah? you blaring your horn at me. You do see why I was actually stopped, yeah? The, the whole train thing? I mean, you you want to go in front and you want to push yourself in front of a big train like that. You be my guest, sunshine. You be my guest. I got no complaints with you going off in front. I'll let you do that next time. I'll tell you what, I will pull over. Next time we come up to a train crossing and the barriers are coming down, I'll pull over early so you can get in front and you can push through those barriers. How's that? Would that make you feel better? 
Would it? Is that what you want? God. I, 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 I tell you what. Some people should not be allowed on the roads. There are people that should just never have been allowed to get a license in the first place. And that idiot back there, he's one of them. Definitely. It's definitely one of them. Right. The only issue with the truck with doing this is obviously it's not very easy to tip out using the truck right you can tip out on flat ground that's the easy bit but it's when it starts to pile up that's when you really struggle with the truck because the trucks obviously it's not designed to go up over the rough silage uh, so much as anything else is and that definitely makes it a little bit more difficult and we can you can back in going to be backing in quite so much with this trailer but it is definitely a possibility for just just backing in and uh, pulling out again like that um and then with our road train we can either just drive straight through and do it like that or we can split it up into two separate ones and i can back in unload and then pull out and then do the same with the second one and we just kind of rotate them like that. It doesn't actually take that long. I've done that before on one of the time lapses. I can't remember which one it was. But I essentially, I would take, I had through, I think it was in FS15 actually. Um, I had three trailers. I'm pretty sure I had three trailers. I think I, 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 I think I had three trailers. If I didn't do it on that, I, maybe I did it on my own. Maybe I just had two for the time lapse. Um, but yeah, I've definitely done it with three trailers and, and I got three trailers like the two that I've got over here, strung them together and then would just put one at a time on the back of the forager and I'd use a tractor and we would shunt them around a little bit and I would put them onto the back of the forager and then, right, we'll take this one, you know, I may as well just park this one here because we flick between the machinery anyway. So I'll go there, right, uh, like that um yeah so you i would drive the three out to the field there i've unloaded that what are we having at 605 i definitely went further than 605 so around about 600 it would seem is yeah we've definitely we definitely lost quite a lot so it's around about 600 that this one will take after it gets completely full and then it stops taking more on board because I went on a fair way after I reached that 600 point um, so it's, it's definitely it, it doesn't have much of an onboard storage tank which means that really once it's full we, we, we need to stop we, we don't actually have a tank for the silage on board the thing which is a little bit of a shame still doesn't that look fantastic is that not that is that not an absolutely fantastic view? I love it. Genuinely love it. Next thing I want to see is the big bud in action, but we're going to need a lot more silage. So we'll have the, we'll do one more of these. I think one more should be enough. Oh, actually, we've got a fair way to go yet. We might have to do, we might have to do two more. But we'll we we'll get onto those trailers then, and those trailers, as they take so much more, we'll be able to fill up our silage clamp that that just that much faster that that little bit faster than we are right now and it'll also allow us to um get through the field a little bit quicker i mean it's not going to be the fastest job is it we're definitely not going to be doing the speediest job up here but depending on how long it goes i may decide to swap this machine over for a stevie one instead and we're going to have a look we'll, we'll sort of finish it off doing that there's a couple of different techniques that i was thinking of trying with a uh, stevie mod but i'll yeah i will see i will just will we will see how it goes because like i said before the whole thing with the stevie mod is that it becomes a lot lot faster than realistic and i know that a lot of you like me to try and stick at least a bit towards realism and yeah going along with the stevie mod is absolutely great and i do generally play like that when i'm on single player anyway because it, it just speeds things up a bit right it just it just gets it moving along we're still completing the task we are still you know crossing the t's and dotting the i's it's just that we're doing it a whole lot faster than we would otherwise um you could argue that maybe it would be better if i go and get the um the course play mod and i run that one instead 
And I could counter argue, well, that's not really a lot different to using a Stevie mod because you, you're still essentially getting the computer to do the thing for you. It's just that it's not doing it faster with one machine. It's doing it artificially with a whole load of machines. So there's, there's, there's various arguments for in, in favor of and against. Right, let's just move that one up there. Uh, hmm. Right, well, I've got that bit done. There's the big bud. And then we go over to you. We will go and take this trailer, and we'll empty out this trailer. And then we'll have a look. I think that I might just park this trailer up now, and we will set the hired help going with the forager, and we will start pulling both of those trailers alongside the forager. I'd actually really, really like to get going with that. Um, if I can pull two of them, it'll probably, what we'll end up doing is we'll do that once or twice. But because it's going to be so difficult and awkward to turn on the headlands, uh, we will scrap the idea and we will just have one trailer running alongside. And then we'll just dash off and we'll empty it out as soon as we've got the trailer full. It might just be a little bit easier if we go and do it like that. Rather than trying to tow both of them around all the time, we'll see. We'll see how it works out. So bring this down here, and we wait for the train again. We seem to catch this train every time, just about, don't we? Right. Well, while I'm sat here waiting, I can have a drink of coffee. Much better. Right, let's get going. Cross the railway. Race up the hill. You can't hang around when you're doing silage. It's pedal to the metal the whole time through. And I've never, ever gone... Like, I've worked on grain carting for different farmers and some of them like they like you to go fairly quick when you're out in the fields but you know a lot of the area you you drive slowly you you drive very very slowly and it takes as long as it takes uh, they work their tractor and trailers around having all the tractors driving at a fairly sedate pace in large large areas of the farm um and I've also worked on doing some grain carting where the farmer just wants you literally, as far as he's concerned, the tractor has two positions on the accelerator, on or off. And you better have a very, very good reason for using the off switch on the accelerator. That's, that's literally it, right? On or off, preferred on at all times, regardless of what's happening. Um, those are generally the ones that will have more accidents happening than the other ones, just because they do, they, they can be very insistent about just how recklessly fast they want you to drive at times. And I've, anywhere that I've worked that has done silage, they've, they've been exactly the same, right? Every single place I've worked that has done silage, it doesn't matter whether I've been working for a contractor and doing it in loads of different farms, or I've been working um, for small farms, bigger farms, it doesn't matter. Every single place I've ever done silage, they expect you to drive with the accelerator in the on position. At all times, no exception. The only time you're allowed to take your foot off of the accelerator, the only time that you're allowed to use anything other than the on position, is when you get to the clamp and you're backing in to empty out. As soon as you've emptied your load into it, you pull out and you race away again back, you know, you, you completely back into the on position again. And there, there is, there's no exceptions. No exceptions allowed. That is how you must be at all times. It's, um, yeah, it, 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 it can, can sometimes be a bit stressful having to, like, really having to race like that at all times. Um, I mean, yeah, it's, it's also actually quite a, a, a lot of fun. Why is that? Why is he pushing it around like that? Oh, it's because of the, the, the hills. It, it's making it difficult. All right, the, um, the problem with these trailers is that they don't... Well, he is bending up and down a little bit there, but the, the up and down rotation on them is generally not very good. So it, it does seem to struggle quite a bit with it. And I need to go up here. We need to turn round and come back down. Then we want to set the hired help going. It may struggle to turn round the first time or two. But I think it's generally it's going to be all right. And I'll bring you right round like that. Yeah, this, this is the bit that it's struggling with. We need a... I think we need a slightly longer... 
uh, dolly on the, on the front. Right. Let's stop you there a second. And we'll jump over to you. And then we want to... We don't want to leave that one there at all. We want to... We want to bring this one over. Once it gets over this first little bit that's been done, it'll go a lot easier. But it shouldn't have any issues, I don't think. We'll bring it to about there. No, we can we can bring it back a little bit. Let's bring it to there. Okay, and then I press H like that. He starts up. He's ready and raring to go. And so then I bring this one along here, and with the long spout, I may actually be able to drive along right behind him and still be in the right position. Yes. And it's a lot easier with the lorry as well, with the truck, compared to having a tractor doing this job. Um, I found that out with the time lapse, because the, obviously the tractor is a lot longer, and so it leaves a much bigger gap between you and the back of the vehicle. Um between sorry between the front of the trailer and the back of the forager you got that much longer gap and that does actually cause you a little bit of a problem which i mean you wouldn't think that it would cause any kind of problem at all but it it, it does it's it's surprising how much of an issue that can become for the actual forager so we'll let you go up there and how are you going to work this i think the, the way that we're going to work it is we're going to let that one turn Right there. He's waiting for us now, isn't he? We're going to have to go and manually turn that one around. We'll come down here. And we'll do this slowly. Because we don't actually want to go off the side of the cliff right there. We'll come in round there. I did struggle to straighten that up just then. I don't know if you noticed. I was sliding sideways a little bit. This is why I don't like trees on the side of the road. Because you can't see what you're doing. Absolutely can't see what you're doing. I'm going to bring that up round there. And then we'll come round here. You've got to be careful with how you turn. You really do. And I'm going to go to there. So at the moment... That one's struggling. But I, I think that's just struggling because it wanted to like empty out one more little bit before it wanted to do its turning around. Which is all well and good, but I don't want it to do that. So I'm going to bring that one back to there. Um, we're going to go right back up here, look. That's... Where are we looking? I think that's about where we want to be about there. So let's start that one up again. And then we want to go back to our truck over here. And we get another run. And he, sh he should go up and he should turn around the other side without too much trouble. Our main issue is going to be turning the truck around ourselves. All right? Yes, yeah, so that's what I needed to do. I needed to just be a little bit closer in order to be able to turn around. Because we can follow along behind it here without any issues. But you wouldn't normally do that. Yes, you can do it, but you wouldn't normally do that. Normally what you would do is you would just go alongside it like this. There we go. Now we're talking, we've got the road train going up alongside the Forager and it's doing a wonderful, wonderful job of it. Look at that, purple wheels and everything. I really love the colours that we've got on this truck. Genuinely love the colours we've got on this thing. I think it works really well. The dark purple with the red, uh, with the, the black and then the red stripe down the side, it's, it's subtle. It's not overpowering. I think it is a very, very nice color combination. I really do. I love this color combination. Now, you need to turn round. But at the same time as turning round, I, yeah, look, see? It does that. But it doesn't like you. Like, it, it waits until the trailer, is, it comes up beside it. Now it's going to get itself stuck on the tree. Yeah, that's great. It's only like there's a little tiny bit there on the tree. I would have thought that the spout would have passed underneath that. I'm actually a little bit surprised that it did get stuck on that. I thought that the spout would have um, would have passed right through it. Never mind. Right, we get to there, and going this way again will be absolutely fine because it'll come up. It the turn should be a little bit easier for it next time. I hope. So let's go back to you. Now, our big problem this time is going to be turning this one round. 
Have we actually got room to turn this one? We can, we can move to there. And it can make a little start there. So the forager moves out of the way. It's going to move on to the second trailer a minute. It's going to stop there. Let it run. Right. We've gone as far as we can on there. So now we need to bring this one on round. And we need to do a turn. And this, this is, this is going to sort of give us a demonstration of how easy this is going to be for doing the turning for the rest of this job. Keeping it on two trailers. Right. It's going to be a little bit tight, but I think we should be all right with it for the most part. Uh, the bigger issue, I think, is going to be emptying it out. Because these trailers, they, they don't actually empty out all that easily. So I, I do think that once we've done this once, it would actually be better for us to... Um, stop doing it like this and just have the one trailer. I, th I think that's just going to work out a little bit better for us. And also that right there. It will chop and change between the trailers a bit. That's fine. We That's actually not going to make much difference to us. We can run it alongside and it can do that. So what I can do, I can actually bring that one all the way up like that. If you get too far ahead, it doesn't really like it. It does complain quite a bit if you get too far ahead. And then it'll do that. And then it'll move round it. And it'll go to the next trailer. And then it'll move on again. And then you'll get to there. Now, if I stop, is he going to allow it to turn properly? Or is he going to do that? Look, it's done that exact same nonsense again. I've only got to just follow it along a little bit. And then it'll give up. It, it won't worry about it in the slightest. And it'll go and do its turning. But it, it's... There, look, see? It's got to have this one there just for a bit to start with. Now he'll go and do his turn, and he won't bat an eyelid. You know, whether I'm there or not is not going to make any difference to it whatsoever. What i got to do is i got to go traipsing up across the grass up here so that I can make my turn with the truck. This huge, great big road train on behind us. He's going to miss a big chunk of it there anyway. But we know he's going. He's, he's, we know he's going to do that. There is definitely going to be some issues with it leaving some bits behind. And then we can carry on up through here. So, uh, yeah, th there will be triangles all along the edge of this field. I should think. I'd be well. I'd be surprised if there aren't triangles all the way along the edge of the field. There's something that we can live with. I don't mind that bit. And then we can come up to here and. We've made. We've now. Is we've now got a good start on the field. Like we've done once around the field. That's that's always a good start. Like immediately, and we're also going right the way round the field. I'm going to slow down the cruise control, and I'm going to set the cruise control there on six miles an hour. There we go. Now we're cruising along. We've got the field, it's, it's opened up, and we are, we're, we're now into it properly. I would say we're now into the crop properly, especially coming up this end up here. I'm not quite sure how it's going to do the turn, but we're getting some nice long runs. So we'll do, it'll do a turn here, and I'm hoping he will turn back on himself quite nicely. And then, once we've done this little bit, just there, it should be a quite a clean, neat and tidy turn here. Um, actually, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking he's going to go down this way. And when he comes back up again, he's still... He's not going to go right up the next full section. Not quite. There's still going to be some space there. Which is going to be a little bit more difficult for it to fill. Right. Hmm. I didn't think this through. Maybe not go down over that hill quite so much in future. Not that I should need to. We, we shouldn't have any issues with that in the future. Well, there we go, folks. I'm afraid that's it. We've run out of time, which means that we need to head on home. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.